Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're happy to have so many of you joining us today for our session to help you connect faculty and students with your NewsBank resources. We do have a big group coming in today, and I know people are still joining, but we are at the top of the hour, so let's get started. My name is Katherine Bergerson. I am the Assistant Vice President of Marketing here at NewsBank, and I will be joined today by my colleague, Parker Pogue. He's in the background. You might hear us call out to him if we have any technical issues. Also joining me is a familiar face, Karina Morgan. You may recognize her, Karina, along with two of our colleagues, Michelle Klanowski and Laurel Roars. And we are here to help answer your questions along the way through our presentation. So if you do think of anything that comes up, please type it into the question box and we will do our best to get to all of the questions. So as we get started, just wanted to let you know that the session is being recorded we will send out a copy of the presentation along with a survey following today's event. And I wanted to share with you that all of our contact information and the slides we share today are available in the handout section. You can download those at any time. So right now is really a perfect time to look at how you're leveraging your electronic news bank resources. As we know in today's digital age, those digital resources and online access to them is more critical than ever. And with NewsBank, you are bringing the most credible, comprehensive content that's available to your faculty and students, whether they're accessing them in person, in the classroom, in the library, online, or somewhere in between. In the next 45 minutes, it's our goal to share with you how Access World News Research Collection and historical newspaper archives can reach your institution's diverse research needs. We'll share some best practices about how to connect with faculty and students and really reach across a wide variety of curricular areas. We'll give you a preview of our academic resource center, including video tutorials, social media ideas, and our new LMS integrations. The many ways that we're here to support you. And again, we'll have time for questions throughout the presentation. We'll pause from time to time. So just type them into the question box and we'll do our best to get to all of them. If that sounds good to everyone, let's dive right in. I'd like to start with a quick poll to find out a bit more about you, the group that we're here with today. If you would please share with us what most closely describes your primary area of focus. Perhaps it's the humanities, political science and history, or health sciences. Perhaps business and economics, or natural sciences such as biology or environmental studies. And if it's something else, we'd like to hear from you too. And you can also use the question um, box to type in your area of focus if you would. We'll give you a few moments to submit your responses. You can see that they're coming in. I'll give you just a few more seconds to answer. Okay, and why don't we close it out and take a look. Okay, great. So we can see that we have 31% uh, in the humanities area, nine in business and economics, 11 in the health sciences, four in natural science and 44% other. Oh, great. Well, it's so good to get to know a bit more about you. Thank you for answering. And now I'd like to share a little bit more about NewsBank. NewsBank is a leading news and information provider to research institutions like yours and public libraries. And we're proud to share that this month we're celebrating our 49th anniversary. It's actually this week, our 49th anniversary. And what we do, we aggregate news sources from around the world, bringing you, your faculty and students, credible, vetted, global news, many of which are unique to NewsBank and all are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any device. So let's get started with a walkthrough of Access World News Research Collection. I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Michelle Klanowski. Michelle is the Vice President for Product Management here at NewsBank, and she has more than 20 years of experience working with libraries, faculty, and students to ensure that NewsBank resources provide an outstanding user experience. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks, Catherine. So let's get started. Access World News is a comprehensive collection of more than 12,000 sources covering more than 200 countries. 
This vast collection supports users with information on just about any topic you can think of. Whether you have students doing research to support a class assignment, or faculty looking for articles to use in the classroom, or even their own research, no matter the topic, users will be able to find relevant information. Our interface was designed with the objective of enabling end user success. It has been built through extensive user testing and feedback. And users told us they wanted a mobile responsive design, a clean and simple look, a resource that's easy to use, and they wanted to find relevant information within three clicks and ideally two. So the statement you see here at the top of the screen is meant to orient the user to ensure they know what the site is about and give them context about the type of information they will find in this collection. The words comprehensive and reliable and any topic resonated with our users the most, and they told us they felt that the resource was authoritative and reliable. And in today's day and age with fake news, providing context within the database ensures the students, faculty, and staff feel comfortable they are in a reliable resource, which is critical to user success and driving usage. We started here with a simple single search box front and center. Librarians asked us to provide search functionality similar to other resources patrons and students are used to using to make it simple for them to find and use information. Ultimately, eliminating the need to train users and hopefully save you time. And for the more sophisticated users who want to conduct a more complex refined search, we provide an alternative advanced search option through our more search options link. I mentioned users are looking for relevant information quickly. They want immediate gratification. As a result, we've developed our suggested topics. The topics provided are the most searched topics by students and faculty and Access World News. We've worked with our editorial team to craft custom searches to provide highly relevant content. For example, a subject you might not associate with news is stress and anxiety, which is a topic many students have searched over the past year. And you can see here we have the topic health. And if we click on the icon, you're going to see a subset of categories. From there, as we scroll down under mental health, you're going to see the category for stress and anxiety. This will take us to a set of highly refined search results on the topic. And while some users may not think of news as a place to go for information on health conditions, what we've learned from our end users is they often find the latest trends or treatments for a condition, which may be so new they haven't even made it into a medical publication yet. There's the added benefit that news on health topics written in news publications are typically written in the layman's point of view, so it's easier for many to get up to speed. These articles then make a great complement to other sources available through your library. We've also heard from faculty and librarians. These editorially crafted searches you see up here at the top of the screen are a great way for them to teach students how to conduct a more complex search and improve their information literacy skills. So we're going to head back to the home screen. And you can do so by clicking on that news bank icon. Additionally, the students have told us they view these suggested topics as research starters or a way for them to identify what topic they want to use for their class assignment. So if you have a student who comes to you and they're looking for an idea for a topic for their assignment, this is a great place to send them for ideas. Overall, the suggested topics approach allows users to get relevant information in only two clicks, all without a single keystroke, which was one of our keys to facilitating end user success. As we further explore the interface, along the right hand side, you're gonna see a link to our special report, which is current and retrospective news articles on a particular topic. 
they're usually organized around a theme. It could be the Olympics or even Black History Month. We also have hot topics, which are current research topics covering key global issues and events, people, business, economics, and more. Further, as we scroll down, we can create custom links based on your institution's collection. Perhaps you're one of our libraries, which has recently purchased our latest collection, Black Life in America. Or maybe you have one of our many historical archives, such as the San Francisco Chronicle, where you want to be able to search the publication all the way back to the 1800s. Either way, we can create a custom link for your institution. So let's go ahead and conduct a search. So based on our customer use analytics, there's been an increase in searching on the topic of human trafficking. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type in human trafficking and we're going to put it the search terms in quotes. This ensures that we're going to search the exact phrase. So from here we can click on the search icon and it's going to take us to the results page. We consider this page our power page. It allows users to tailor results using filters along the left hand side and they can watch the results change dynamically without leaving the same page once again enabling end user success. You can see the default sort order is newest matches first. However, you do have the option to change to either best matches or oldest matches. So you can see here we have quite a few results over 500,000. And perhaps you're trying to find varying perspectives on a, an issue or an event such as human trafficking. And in particular, you want to focus on Mexico. From here, we can further refine our search by combining the search terms, human trafficking, adding the Boolean operator and and Mexico and click search. We're going to watch our search results change right here on the screen. So we're now down to 42,000 articles. Perhaps you'd still like to refine a little bit more. From here, you could do so by narrowing to a particular date range using our date selector. We have information on this topic back to the 1980s. And if you wanted to narrow to just the most recent two decades, you could slide your arrow over and select apply. Once again, those results are going to change right here on the screen. You also have the option to do a custom date search. If you hover over the question mark, you can see just about any format of a date range you could possibly enter. Further, you could narrow by a specific source type. You can see the breadth of coverage and the types of sources available through this collection from audio, college and university newspapers, news wires, transcripts, videos, web only sources. You could narrow by a specific year. You could also narrow by a source name or even a source location. Perhaps you were looking for a firsthand account of an issue or an event along with other perspectives, but you wanted to make sure you had at least one viewpoint from where an issue or an event happened. If you wanted to, you could narrow to a specific source in Texas where an event occurred. Finally, you have the option to narrow by a language. Now, if we head back up to the top of the screen, a key component of enabling end user success is for our news products to fit into the task the user is performing. All the tools like citations, downloading, sharing, etc., need to be accessible and easy to use, which you will see right here in the toolbar. First and foremost, we leveraged industry icons with hover text to make the interface easy to use. You can see in the toolbar, you have the option to select multiple articles at one time. In fact, you can select the first 20, or maybe you just like to select a couple. Either way, this was one of the most frequently requested enhancements that we heard from faculty throughout the country. And it's a great example of how we integrate into the end users workflow. You have the option to cite, email, print, download, or even save to your personal folder for use at a later date 
whether you're in the library, classroom, or even the dorm room. Another key element of the search results page is our pop-up preview pane. If you hover over the headline, you're going to see a preview pane open up, which includes a little bit more text of the article. It allows you to determine quickly whether this might be relevant to your research or not. From here, you can view the document. You can also access the preview pane through the preview link. Finally, you have the option to set up an alert. Perhaps you want to continue to receive new articles on the subject of human trafficking in Mexico. If you click on create an alert, you can enter your email address and select the frequency. So we're going to head on into an article. So you can see here we have those same icons we were just talking about. A new one is text size. Perhaps you're one of those which would prefer a little larger font size. If we click on the text size, it will increase font or we could go back to the industry standard. You also have the option to cite an article. I have to say this is the part that students are typically the most excited. It means they can find the information they need without having to leave the resource. We have the most commonly used export citation tools, such as RefWorks and EndNote. And then we also have actual citation formats, such as APA, Harvard, or MLA. If you click on a citation format, such as MLA, you will see it populate right here at the top of the screen. Again, another example of integrating into the workflow. You also have the option to email. You can print. You can download. Either save to a PDF or save to your Google Drive. You can share to your folder. If you have yet to set up your personal folder, it will prompt you to do so. You also have the option to copy this article or the link to this article and share it with another person. You could share it with a friend, a colleague, or maybe you want to share it with your students. Finally, you can share to Google Classroom. One of the most recent enhancements we've added is the ability to provide text to speech, where it will read the article aloud right here. So let's go on back to the home screen. I mentioned earlier, we can create custom links tailored to your institution. Perhaps you're one of the libraries that happens to have the San Francisco Chronicle Historical Archive. We can click on the link to the San Francisco Chronicle, and you're going to see we're providing all formats of the Chronicle all the way back to the 1800s. So the first line is the historical images from 1865 to 2017. We also have the traditional printed text from 1985 to current. We have the full color PDF images from 2017 to present, as well as the web edition articles, which may only appear on the publisher's website from 2016 forward. You can search across all this content simply by adding in a search term right here in the search box. Perhaps we're going to search on earthquakes. And we certainly know there's been plenty in California. You can type in earthquake or earthquakes, or we could use the truncation symbol with the asterisk and it'll pull both up. So from here, we're going to go ahead and click on search. And you will see along the left hand side that we have coverage of earthquakes all the way back to the 1860s. So significant depth of coverage. You can also track a trend. You can see where there's spikes, that it's more likely an earthquake happened in that decade. And so if you go back here, you can see there's another little blip in the early 1900s. If we click on the decade and select apply, it will narrow us to 1900 to 1909. And you can see here, sure enough, in the year 1906, it looks like there was an earthquake. Again, you could click on 1906 and apply, and it will 
narrow our search. And it does turn out there was an earthquake in April of that year. From here, you could click on one of the historical articles. And you can see the actual image of the paper with your search term highlighted. So we're headed back to the home page again, clicking on that news bank icon. I mentioned you do have the option to conduct a more advanced search through our more search options link. We've heard from many librarians recently that there's a need for additional content to support curriculum regarding ethnicity and diversity. And our usage analytics also show an increase in searches on these types of topics. Research collection covers a wide array of subjects to support both students and faculty. Perhaps you have an urban studies class and you're looking for information about gentrification. If we wanted to, we could do a more complex search here by typing in inner city in quotes, so it's searching for that phrase, combined with the Boolean operator or an urban, we can put that search term in all text, or maybe we want to narrow to the lead paragraph, which is where the who, what, where, why, when of an article. If you find your search term there, most likely it's going to be relevant. You could also narrow to headline, author, byline, and more. So for now, we're going to go ahead and select lead and first paragraph. We're going to go ahead and combine that with another Boolean operator, and you could also do or or not. And here we're going to put in gentrification. Well, actually, we're going to type in G-E-N-T-R-I-F with an asterisk. So it's going to pull up gentrify or gentrification. And we're going to change this to an all text search. So we're searching across all content. You could further narrow by adding another search term. And from here, we click on search. So you can see here, we've got multiple viewpoints on this topic coming from the University of Virginia, as well as a national publication. We also have the Chicago Crusader and much more. Maybe you're looking for multiple perspectives on a more global issue or event. So we're gonna click on new search. And perhaps you have an Asian studies assignment and you want to explore varying viewpoints of COVID and you're in particular interested in COVID and how China views COVID versus Australia. If we scroll down, you can see you can refine your search by location. So perhaps we'll start with Asia and Australia. And as we click next to each of the continents, you're going to see them highlighted on the map. And so from here, we're gonna type in coronavirus and notice we added COVID-19 with a dash, without a dash, and we used Boolean operators just to cover the various ways that COVID-19 may be referred to in the news. We can do an all text search. And from here again, you could do news matches first or best matches, and we can click on search. And you will see when our search re results page populates here that we have articles from Sydney, Australia. Other areas of Australia, New Zealand. And Asia. A couple last pieces of information. We do have the option to look up a public publication using the A to Z source list. If you look at the top of the screen, you can click on A to Z source list and you can search for a specific publication. You can type in the source name, location, language, format. We also mentioned that the resource is mobile responsive. It was clear from our research that usage of mobile devices was extensive for all types of libraries and mobile usage would 
was only going to increase. To that end, we wanted to ensure that we had a mobile responsive product, which would be critical to users to get them to engage with the product regardless of the device they want to use. So to give you a sense of what it looks like, if we're on the main page here and we start to scroll on over, over, you can see this is what it would look like on a tablet. Last but not least, up in the top right hand corner, there is a share feedback link. Over the past couple of years, we've continued to make enhancements to our interface based on user feedback. So we encourage you to provide us feedback through this link, both positive and constructive. So with that, I thank you for your time and I'll turn it back over to Catherine. Laurel, I am going to introduce you. Laurel has more than 15 years of experience working with librarians and faculty to get the most value out of NewsBank resources. She has a passion for literacy and manages a team of customer engagement representatives who are looking forward to assisting you with visibility, training, and your promotional needs. And today she's here to give us some tips and tools on how to support your institution and share some examples of how other colleges and universities are promoting their news bank resources. Welcome, Laurel. Thank you, Catherine. And hello, everyone. And thanks for joining us this afternoon as we traverse the ever-changing landscape of reaching out to students and faculty who may be attending on campus or online to support their research needs. Today, we will share some ideas on how we help our libraries get the most value out of their NewsBank resources. As part of the customer engagement team, I've assisted university and college libraries all across the country and around the world with ways to promote your resources for students and faculty on both your websites and through social media. So you might ask, how do we go about this? Let's get started by going right to our Academic Resource Center. You may easily go to NewsBank's website at www.newsbank.com and select the Marketing and Resource Center for Universities and Colleges. Here you may click either on our Getting Started Guide you see at the top, where you may download and print out our best practices for setting up your resources, or you can go directly to the resources your library subscribes to, which you see in the icons below, such as Access World News, America's News, one of our newest collections, Black Life in America, or perhaps you have our Cannabis Research Edition, or you may be looking for ways to promote your historical archives or integrated collections with multiple formats Michelle mentioned earlier, available to support students' research needs, including both full text and full color image editions. Now, let's click on Access World News where our first step is to create visibility on your NewsBank's, excuse me, on your library's website to help build awareness of NewsBank resources for both your students and faculty. We have heard from many librarians that providing easy to reach, remote access 24 seven is more important now than ever. Here we have descriptions available for you to post on your library's homepage as a featured database in your A to Z database list, new or trial databases and in libguides or subject areas you may have created such as business for students looking for help with careers or companies environmental studies for students researching climate change or perhaps one of our newest suggested topic categories covering diversity equity and inclusion our customer engagement team sends out links and descriptions you may post for your databases to help you get started. Or perhaps you are in the midst of updating your LibGuides and would like some additional support. We are here to support your research needs. Now, let's take a look at how to leverage our tools to build awareness and increase usage of your America's News or Access World News databases. 
You may share our materials during new student orientations with subject liaisons and faculty via email, during your weekly or monthly meetings, or any other ways you may use to currently highlight and reach out to faculty members to, it, to showcase new and featured databases, perhaps as a blog page or newsletters. NewsBank provides a series of short tutorials on how to use your resources, such as America's News, Access World News, Suggested Topics, and others for self-paced training. And these may be embedded right on your website for easy access by students wanting to know more. You may also go to our on-demand webinar section in the next few days, where today's academic webinar will also be available. And now, one of our most highly researched current topics trending among students are race and equity issues. With Catherine and Parker's help, we are going to show one of our newest tutorials relevant for today's studies, Black Life in America. And you may want to turn up your volume for this presentation. In NewsBank's Black Life in America collection, you'll find credible, vetted primary sources covering the impact and experience of African Americans as recorded by the news media from 1704 through today. More than 800 suggested searches help pinpoint influential events, notable people, and other topics of interest. For example, let's click on an era, such as the Civil Rights Movement, then select an area of interest, zoom in. Let's click on Rosa Parks. Here you see the suggested search delivers relevant results. Prefer to create your own search? Enter your terms here. You can refine results by date, source, location, and more. Preview articles or begin reading. Citation information is clearly listed at the top. You can email, download, or share the article. Back on the results page, you can save your personalized search and set up an alert. You'll receive an email when new information is available. Black Life in America content is updated daily. Access is available anytime in the library or remotely 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This are available in our Academic Resource Center. NewsBank also partners with you on how to promote resources on your Twitter feeds, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Let's take a look at social media posts we have created for National Hispanic Heritage Month, which is celebrated from September 15th through October 15th. Feel free to copy and paste this post right on your social media outlets to encourage students to learn more about several thought-provoking books from Latino and Hispanic authors. Also coming up October 11th is U.S. Indigenous Peoples Day, in recognition of this special day, meet three-time U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Herjo. Learn more about her poetry and impact on the Native American community through our already prepared social media. And feel free to share this article on your social media feeds with students and faculty. And on a lighter note, if you're a fan of caramel apples, there is also a special day for you on October 14th. Look for our social media to try this classic recipe or perhaps bring in a treat to share at the library. Also, by clicking on our monthly media social post links, this will allow you to add your name to receive our monthly mailing list for new social media posts that will arrive each month in your inbox. This section of our Academic Resource Center provides easy to follow implementation guides and short videos 
we'd be glad to share with you to help integrate Access World News with several discovery services, such as EBSCO Discovery and Primo, Primo VE. Our customer engagement team is here to help navigate this process and help you get the most value out of your news bank resources. Also, Access World News can integrate with your learning management systems, such as Blackboard and Canvas. Our integrations feature single sign-on, allowing faculty to easily add articles, sources, and databases to courses, modules, and class assignments. We have heard from many librarians how important it is to place resources in multiple areas, and we can schedule an appointment to help you get started. Next, we have a few samples from colleges and universities, just like yours that we have consulted with, including Rogers State University in Oklahoma, who is currently featuring the Access World News Research Collection right on their homepage to stand out for students as a new resource this semester. Also, many subject librarians determine which resources fit best in their LibGuides or Research Guides. We are here to help you. Rogers State found one of the most relevant LibGuides to include Access World News was Communications, where information on nearly any topic can be found with daily updates on over 12,000 sources covering over 12, excuse me, 200 countries and territories around the world. Our customer engagement team is here to partner with you and help recommend which LibGuides may be best supported by your news bank resources. And coming up, another great example of how the Access World News Research Collection can be posted on your library website is Louisiana State University, where we are easily found by students under their frequently used databases. We are also included under research guides for news and newspapers for Louisiana including important state titles such as The Advocate and Times-Picayune, where students are able to easily locate resources they recognize. LSU Libraries also created their own personalized how-to videos to support students with hands-on learning and short video clips embedded right on their website. Tutorials similar to these can also be found in our Academic Resource Center. Or please feel free to contact me if you would like direct links to specific videos, such as how to conduct a basic search or how to use the A to Z search list for a particular title that you saw a bit earlier. And now we'd like to give a big thank you to all of our colleges and universities that promote resources for students and faculty on their social media outlets. Thanks to Texas A&M Commerce Library, for their creative and colorful post featuring the Houston Chronicle collection covering both the past and present from 1901 to today's news. Also, Kentucky State Library is featuring National Newspaper Week, which is celebrated this year from October the 3rd through the 9th, where students can look to Access World News to explore diverse topics and trends. And last but not least, there is a lot of information out there. Constitution Day was September 17th, and one of our frequent posters, Rogers Library at Francis Marion University, highlighted one of our special reports to help students learn more about the history of the Constitution from our credible vetted resources available at Newsbank. We are here to support your library's training and promotion efforts as you continue to provide such a vital role supporting both students and faculty. Our customer engagement team is here to provide training for faculty and staff, assist your subject liaisons with recommendations for LibGuides, and help you navigate the integration of Access World News in several of your discovery services and learning management systems to place your resources right where your students are researching assignments. And back to you, Catherine, for any incoming questions. Thank you, Laurel. Yes, we do have a few questions. Um, Laurel and, and Michelle and Karina, um, whoever's the best to field them, you just let me know. We do have a question about the session folders and perhaps this one's for Michelle. Does the session folder require creating an account? 
Yes, it does. Um, if you go to save an article in your session folder, it will prompt you to either log into your account or create a new account and you'll enter in your email address and your own unique password. And then if you want to access the articles at a later date, um, right up next to the A to Z source list, there is a session folder link. And if you click on that down arrow, it will give you the option to log into your folder to re-access those articles. So it's the same username and password every time you go to use the resource. And I think that then answers a related question about does saving to a folder require creating an account with a password? Yes. Great, thank you for that. Um, Laurel, I think this one is, is for you. For the social media posts that um, we've already created, are these resources that require a login? How does that work? Uh, yes, very, very good question. And we create open URLs, so there should, um, you should be able to open all of our links. And if there is a glitch, if you have any issues, we recommend uh, going into an incognito window and posting it there. And that usually resolves any issues. Thank you. And it looks like one last question. Do discovery systems like Ex Libris um, have the ability to connect directly to an article? Yes. When Primo or, or Primo VE are set up uh, using a webhook API, then you, that will result in article linking. And if you do have any further questions on any uh, technical areas such as that, our customer engagement team and also our customer service team are available to help you with that. Excellent, thank you. Well, in the interest of time, we are gonna, gonna wrap things up here. And if we didn't get to one of your, your questions or I messaged back and forth with a few of you, we will follow up with you after, after today's event. Um, but I do just want to wrap things up telling you that this session was just one step in our commitment to working with you. We do have many ways to maximize our partnerships. And we do invite you, as Laurel mentioned, for a complimentary customized in-service training for your colleagues or your faculty. If they're new to the, the library or perhaps um, they need to be a, a brush up on the News Bank resources, let us know. We'll be happy to schedule a time for you. Now, if you experience any technical issues or have questions there, our customer service team is here to assist. And we have these helpful resources that we believe you can start using right away. That newsbank.com resource center, the links are right here. So if you download this presentation, you can link directly to all of these pages. You don't need to go search around in our website. And you may want to bookmark our videos page. Um, we do continually update that, and they're great to pull out to use on your social media or in your newsletter. Also, the ready-to-use social media posts, if you would like to receive those um, monthly via email, there's a link right here. If you click on that, you can sign up and we will email them to you once a month. The examples Laurel shared and a few more are also in that handout section. If you would like to download them, you can start using them right away. If you have any trouble accessing any of the information, just let me know and I'll be happy to send it over to you after the event. So we're so grateful for the time that you spent with us today. We hope you found it to be valuable and that you have actionable ways to help connect your faculty and students to your electronic news bank resources right away. As you log out, there'll be a brief survey. Please do take a moment to let us know what you thought about today's session. It will help us improve for the future. On behalf of the news bank team, thank you for spending part of your day with us. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>